Hey everybody, Dave Shopius here with another update of the uh, B9 robot from Wasp Space Rebuild. A um, little bit of a recap from the other videos. I've got this uh, robot in from uh, a friend up north in Massachusetts. Uh, I believe that's where it's, he's from. Um, he needed me to help him get it uh, rebuilt and put back together. He got it. It was kind of a mess and in pieces. You can see that in one of my other videos, uh, first of several that I have in this series of uh, built, rebuilding this B9. So what I have done since the last video is pretty much got the chest lights going, which was a major undertaking. And I also mounted the programming bay. Got everything working nice in there. Um, the door sliding back and forth and is mounted real permanent so it's it's in there now before it was just flopping around and just held in by two little bolts um, I'll show you the inside a little bit later but um, I'm using Tom was Lusky I think that's his last name but it's uh, Tom W's uh, light board controller here um, I also and he does a really nice job I love the looks of that it, it, you can program in different uh, light patterns and effects just by grounding some pins uh, off the board you got to look uh, on our website b9 robot builders website or Tom's uh, website for that uh, it, it's just, it just makes it so simple and classy um, it, it runs several things it runs that little light down there it runs these belly lights and it runs the uh, chest lights back behind here i've got a light box that craig uh rick i can't even say his name but craig r <laughs> he, he built the he has a brand new item he's got on his vendor page on our website uh, it's it was very very nice um very easy it's got its own led light mounted in it so, again i'll show you that in a second and what else I did is I got the chest plate, uh, the neon plate, painted, trimmed, and mounted. So um, it's ready for the neon to be mounted on. So all I got to do is take it back out and start mounting the neon and get it interfaced with the sound system. Right now I'm temporarily feeding it off the leg section that I showed in other videos. I got 12 volts feeding it coming in from below. Uh, and uh, later, I got all. You got to look at my other videos to take a look and see what I have down in there. Just um, I've got a Easy B from Easy Robots uh, robot controller down there that's got its own 20 amp fuse in it, and a couple of saber tooth motor controllers with uh, one of them's got a kangaroo. Uh, and uh, there's really nothing that needs to be fused down there. Except for that Easy B, and it's got its own fuse mounted inside, and I've never had one below, so I feel pretty good about it being semi inaccessible. These, however, are the two feeds that come up from below. I got two separate, um, two separate uh, AC to DC converters down there to take the wall voltage and convert it into DC power and by a flip of a switch I've also got two um, batteries mounted in series I'm sorry parallel down there um, that through really relays really I can run it one to the other right now I'm running on you can see it's unplugged I'm running on the batteries and I've got the switch in that position which is batteries all the way down is uh, the wall voltage and um, this is where you plug in for the uh, battery charger and I have all this documented on other um, videos got a nice little battery charger right here I'm sorry battery indicator we're running at 60% of what the batteries have in them and I'm pushing 12.1 volts so right now I've got enough and that'll go off automatically by itself or I can shut that off so we're on battery power now I haven't charged those batteries for a month and I've been using them for stuff like this for a while. Um, a couple of little issues I have here. As you can see, um, the, those lights are supposed to be green and red. And uh, whoever had this before me working on it made them purple and blue. So you can see the green and red there. I've got some LEDs coming. Let's see if I can't get this off easily enough. 
I guess I can't. I'm not going to mess with that. But I've got uh, cluster LEDs in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the uh, video right now and get that cap off. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, I've got a LED uh, rated for 6.5 volts. And that's coming right off of Tom's board it's hooked off of. And uh, I have a um, black socket with its own wires coming off the back. This is like a 555 bayonet socket. Um, this is a super bright from Cointaker.com, 6.5 volts. So it's, uh, you can tell, well, once it's in there right, I have everything right. You can tell it really looks nice. Uh, with a proper color, it'll even look better. Uh, those are Dialyte sockets back there. I just drilled the back out of it and ran the wires through the back. But you can see the guy put a, just a piece of gel in there. I'm going to take that out. I've got green and red LEDs coming. So I've got them on my other robot that I built for myself and it looks good. It really does. So once that's done, it'll be good. The other issue I have here, which I'm not sure what I can do about it, is you can see the light seeping through uh, the edges around the belly lights. And uh, I don't know of a fix right now for that. I might have to take that whole panel off and take those buttons off and probably do something. Maybe put some red gel around, yellow and green around each one. I, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to shut the, this off right now and uh, tip this over and we'll take a quick look at the inside. Okay? I'll be right back. I wanted to show you really quick um, about how I need to take an amp reading on this to fuse these lights. Um, right now, it'll be going through those fuses over on the bottom of the CSS over there. So, I don't have it wired up, but um, the circuits will be coming through there and they need to be fused. The lights, you know how the lights are. Um, I don't like to keep anything like a, like a light unfused or a motor um, servo or something. Maybe they can run by themselves, but not lights. Um, so anyway, this will go through a light, but I don't know how much amperage this thing pulls. I know these will be LEDs. Uh, I've got LEDs behind this, this uh, inside the light box behind these buttons. And these are all 47 bulbs, and they're not pulling a lot of voltage. They're not even, just barely warm. This is cold, these are cold. Um, but I don't know how much amps they're pulling. So we use a amp meter. Uh, put this on amp reading. It's a clamp on amp meter. You put it around all the wires. You got What I like to do is uh, select DC voltage right there. And then um, this matter coming over and clamping it on one of the wires that's feeding those. So this is directly feeding that fuse box which branches out and feeds the um, board and all the lights. So come back here you want to clamp one side at a time just like that. You can see right now it, it's fluctuating. That's because those lights are blinking on and off. So there's a min-max button right here I'm going to put that on max. You see right there, max. So, right now that's holding at point 0.13. Well, that's on the neutral. Let's see what the other one says. Okay, that's on the hot leg. And you can see we're peaking at about uh, the max reading is, is up around 1.21. That's about an amp and a quarter. So I would fuse these with a 2 amp slow blow fuse. Just because when you're fusing you want to go about um, you know 25 to 50 percent higher or the next size higher. So the next size higher here would be a 1.5 amp fuse which I don't think is enough so I'm going to bump it up to 2. So if you have some kind of catastrophic failure, two amps ain't nothing. It'll blow. So it will, before it takes anything else, you don't want it cascading through the system. So 
now at least I know that everything on the front of that robot here, all those lights, are taking uh, about an amp and a quarter. And I want to fuse it, I'm going to fuse it at two amps, I'm going to use a slow blow fuse. I hope that helps somebody, it's very interesting, okay? Back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is the inside of the robot. I had to, I hope you can see this okay. Usually it picks up pretty good. It, on my screen here looks like looks really dark, but I'm sure this will be fine. But you can see, um, I had to take all the wiring out that was in here before and redo all the wiring, put diodes uh, on each light socket and rewire with new wire that Tom, it's all in the kit that Tom sends. Uh, this is Tom's light bird board back here. Really nice, it's a piece of art. He, he sends it with all the wiring and all the header pin, all the headers and pins in place. Uh, it's fed by 12, I think from, I think he said it's 9 to, to 18 volts. Don't quote me on that, look on his time. But I've got, I'm being, I'm, it's being fed right now with 12 volts into this um, wiring block that I have here, just to make it easier for all the connections. Uh, I've got that epoxy right to the back of the fiberglass torso. And if you look, if you're wondering what these are, you can look on one of my other videos. My uh, the, the torso actually came with these holes cut out too big. Uh, this was my fix. I, I put a double watt thin, double thick piece of fiberglass on here, bolted it down, uh, glued it in with uh, five minute epoxy, and put a bunch of other stuff along the seam, and basically turned out like that. <laughs> It's documented on another, another um, video of mine. You can see how big it was. See where the gray is here? That's how big it cut out. It was cut out, and that's what I fixed. So, and this is all uh, epoxied in. So, anyway, back to this. Um, there's the back of uh, the uh, neon backing plate. Um, the, the back of the dialyte, which I showed you. Um, like I said, I have... Uh, the back drilled out and just these two wires coming out. This is actually a pop bumper uh, wiring kit, a wire, wires, wired socket, pump bump, pop bumper wired socket for a pinball machine. Uh, I got that at pinballlife.com. Uh, you can get them at Marcos or something else if you're into it. Yeah, they're really nice. I just put this Molex connector on here and ran it right off of Tom's board. It's all wired into this matrix right this is all lighting matrix and it seems complicated but it really isn't uh, you take it one step at a time and follow Tom's fantastic um, uh, instructions and it's uh, it, it lays right in place uh, just follow them <laughs> okay uh, this is Craig's light box I was telling you about just beautiful stainless steel it's got a light already mounted inside of it and uh, I'm running it directly off of 12 volts off of here. It doesn't go through the light matrix or the board. And there's the back of the um, programming bay. And Craig makes those too. When I got it, it was it was just being held on by these two bolts. It was flopping around on here. I had to actually add some epoxy putty and mount some bolts and then get it down in there and adjust, you know, tighten up all the bolts, add a couple missing ones there in there. And it actually... Everything slides around really nice. So I had my doubts when I first started playing with it. Everything was binding up. Okay, so basically that's it. Um, that's what I've done so far. You wonder what this is? Uh, this is some weather stripping I've stuck on there because this is a old Dewey torso, and it uh, when they built them they would tilt forward. And it's kind of squashed in front. Not much, just just about that much. I added some washers here, epoxy those on there. I added this foam rubber on here just to give it a little bit of a a, a bounce and cushion. That's about all it is. Um, and that sits down on the CSS and bolts down here. And there is the CSS. So um, what do I do next? Next, I'm going to pull that uh, mounting plate out for the neon, get the mount, get the neon mounted on it, and then interface it with the sound system. Okay, and we'll have more of that later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.